Hey guys, so we are live. Um, and I'm just waiting for my guest, uh, Crystal Morehallman, to join me. We're going to be talking about mental health and weight management and how it is important in a comprehensive weight loss plan. And specifically, we're going to be talking about motivation. All right, there we go. Hey there, Crystal. Let's see. Can you request to... There we go. All right. Okay, so I've accepted the request. It might take a little minute. Let's see if you pop one here. There we go. Okay, let me adjust my camera. <laughs> I still don't see anything. All right, I can see you now. You can see me? Yes, ma'am. Okay. It, it does have a little um, thing like it's buffering, but there we go. So we're all good? Yep, yep. I all see. right. Well, thanks for joining me. So um, what made us decide to do this? It is National Doctors Week. I do not go live often. <laughs> and behavioral health and weight management is a huge, very important topic. It's one of the four pillars of a comprehensive weight loss plan, along with nutrition, exercise, and then the medical portion, which is um, what I primarily do. So um, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you and for having me. As we get started, just introduce yourself and let everyone know what you do. So I am Crystal Moore Hallman, licensed clinical mental health clinician. Um, I specialize in um, anxiety, depression, life transitions, stress, um, things of that nature. And I see clients 18 and up. Okay. Awesome. And Crystal sees my real patients. Um, I mentioned this in the videos that this is who I refer patients to um, when we're working on weight loss plans and there is a barrier that is somehow in the behavioral or mental health realm. Um, outside of the eating disorders like binge eating and things like that, this is my go-to referral. So she sees my real patients and she is excellent at what she does and my patients absolutely love her. Thank um, you. So let's jump into it. Two of our favorite healers. Well, thank you. <laughs> um, okay, so let's talk about what are some of the things that come up in some of your um, visits when you're dealing with someone who is working on weight loss? Um, what are some of those mental health things that commonly come up in those visits? Um, so just lack of motivation, feeling overwhelmed with the stress of stresses in life and currently with COVID and having to stay in the house, work from home, and you're still home when, you're, when you get off of work, and you still have to do like your daily home duties, things of that nature. So it just gets overwhelming and, and lack of motivation to not feel like you want to do anything outside of the necessary. Yeah, COVID has been huge um, with mental health and, and even with, like you said, motivation for patients. Um, losing motivation to not get a break, not have a vacation and things like that. So that has definitely been, been huge. So how would you define motivation? Um, wanting to implement that workout schedule, wanting to meal prep, wanting to implement healthy eating habits. Right. So when you are home working and you are in that one space for eight hours or nine hours a day, you're just going to want to eat whatever because you're tired. Yeah. And we both know that when I have a patient and we have a plan or we're working towards something and they lose motivation, I've said this to you personally, I can't do a whole lot with that. Um, because when someone, you know, motivation is the why. So when the why is gone, we're stuck. So we have to take a break work on counseling and getting past that why, learn some of the tools and resources to kind of incorporate. So um, can you take us through that? So if someone comes to you or I refer a patient to you and we have a wonderful plan, we've got all these things we want to do, but the execution is not there because the motivation and the interest to do it is not there. What would be some tips that you would give that patient or things that you would work on with them to get them past that hump? Yeah. So everyone has their own unique issue with motivation. It could be 
work is very stressful. All I have time for is work or um, I'm very overwhelmed because I have my kids here. I'm homeschooling and I also have other things to do with my spouse and things like that. So first we explore like what's going on in your life. What are the challenges? And then we talk about implementing boundaries, implementing boundaries, even with your work. So, you know, it's really easy to get caught up in the day and doing everything that you need to do. But you have to remember to take a break, take a lunch, cut it off at five, cut it off at six, even if everything isn't done for that day mm -hmm. and implementing more boundaries and structure into your day to help you find that time where you want to have some time to yourself, implementing that self-care, which exercise is self-care. Eating healthy is self-care. So I explore like what is it in that specific person's day where we need to try to find some boundaries to put in place where you can find time for yourself? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think, you know, the diagnostic approach, figuring out what's going on um, is important along with the team-based approach, which we both kind of approach that patient with, but also the accountability. So when someone is working with you in these one-on-one -on -one counseling sessions, what role does accountability play in um, their weight loss success? Yep, definitely they would need to take a look into, well, am I actually implementing the things that I need to implement to get the results that I need or the, the results that I want. Um, so taking accountability of, well, no, I haven't meal prepped this weekend or no, I didn't do the workout that I said I would do, even if it was for 15 minutes. So definitely looking into and seeing, did I really do the things that I needed to do to get the results? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, for, for the audience, the two things that I really want you to take away from this conversation is one, there are a lot of things that go into a weight loss plan or weight loss success. It's not just, you know, unidimensional um, or unidirectional, you know, these comprehensive plans encompass so many different things. And today we're talking about behavioral health. But the other thing I want you to take home is that it does take a community and sometimes it takes a team. It takes a team of professionals to really help people get to where they need to go. You know, um, Crystal started off talking about COVID. COVID was very difficult for all of us and, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of patients who lost their motivation and they, can't, they couldn't get through that by themselves, which is okay. You know, the, the professionals are here to help um, to help you to get to where you, you need to go and to really help support you. Um, so as we continue with this conversation, just keep that in mind. It's comprehensive and, you know, none of these plans are meant to, for you to be alone. Um, mm -hmm. Have a team of professionals to really help guide you um, through these really difficult things so that you can get to your weight loss goal. Okay, so we've talked about motivation. Um, we've talked about accountability. Let's talk about discipline. So this comes up very often in exercise and weight loss plans. You have to be disciplined. You have to have willpower. You have to have this. You have to have that. What are your thoughts on discipline in, in a, a weight loss success? Well, yeah, when it comes to discipline, it, it really works with changing the narrative around food, exercise. So if you're telling yourself, oh, I can't eat, I only can eat. 20 grams of carbs, uh, that, that sucks or whatever. It, it comes with changing the narrative around mm -hmm. it where I get to eat 20 grams of, of carbs. It's, it's not a bad thing. Um, and pretty much um, when it comes to like your workouts of I get to work out, like this mm -hmm. is a good thing. And it keeps you in that space of, okay, so this is my plan. I've worked with Dr. Coveton, Dr. Coveton, sorry. Right. <laughs> and we came up with this plan and I'm going to stay committed to it. And I'm going to change my narrative around these, these, these are restrictions versus mm -hmm. this is a plan that is especially for me where I can get the goals where, what I need to get. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And I totally agree. What you tell yourself about this process 
um, is really important. If you tell yourself it's grueling and it sucks and it's terrible, that's exactly how it's going to be. But if you have a positive approach to, you know, being disciplined and doing the things that need to be done to be successful, then it can be a lot of fun. So I definitely agree with that. Um, so this is kind of a more broad question, but what role do you think counseling plays in um, helping patients to be successful? Um, it's a very important role because as people, we deal with so many things where we don't have anyone to talk to about it that you know will be confidential. You know, a lot of people are afraid to open up uh, to the people that's in their their space because you don't want it to go any further. You don't want to have any judgment and things like that. So when you see a therapist, a counselor, that stays in that session mm -hmm. and it's non-biased, non-judgmental, and you are able to actually work through some things that you need to work through. And even in counseling, you can figure out some things that you never even thought about that you you, you were dealing with. You don't know what you don't know until That's you know right. it. That's right. I agree 100 percent that's very good um how does depression and anxiety which i know are areas that you specialize in um how does that show up in um a, a weight loss plan that has been derailed or where there is a struggle um to 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 achieve success mm -hmm. what does that look like so sometimes and um anxiety shows up differently for everyone, but sometimes um, with a person dealing with anxiety, they can take on a lot of things. Mm -hmm. They can take on a lot of things because they want everything to be done, everything to be completed, and it leaves little time to implement some things that you want to do for yourself. Um, so that's how anxiety can affect some people. Mm -hmm. um, as far as depression, same thing. Depression shows up differently in everyone. So sometimes with um, depression, it can things can get overwhelming. So overwhelming where you just want to shut down. You just want to take a nap or you just want to do the necessary things and not do any more. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so in the behavioral pillar of a comprehensive weight management plan, we also add habits, behaviors, emotions, um, rituals, routine, structure, because that can go into habits. Um, you know, that's a huge broad topic. And one of the things I mentioned in the video this morning is that it's so broad that there's no way to be able to go into everything. Um, but when we think about routine and rituals, especially, um, and how that relates to behaviors and habits, what advice do you have for people to focus on in those areas to be successful um, with their weight loss? Yeah. Well, you want to know what works for you, right? You want to know what can I implement in my day-to-day -day routine that is really going to work for me, some achievable goals. Mm -hmm. um, so it it's different with every person. So if you know working out in the morning works best for you, implement that before work. If you know you're an evening person, implement that. If you know that lunchtime workouts work for you, implement that you have to know what actually works for you to create the routine that will you will be consistent with mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and my patients will tell you that's where I get into their business <laughs> so so sometimes I am helping them with that routine and ritual and sometimes they like it and sometimes they don't um, because they may there may be some insight like you said you know a, a person on the outside can sometimes look into what you're doing and offer some help or tell you something that's not really benefiting you or give you some advice for something that can really work so I often 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 get into routine rituals and structure um, you know I'll give an example most of my hard-working busy patients skip lunch that's a terrible idea, but that's part of their routine. So, um, you know, if I have patients on the live, they'll tell you I get all in their business um, because the routine is so big. And, you know, the other thing that I hear you um, alluding to is strategy. Mm -hmm. You know, the plan 
strategy is 50 percent of weight loss right mm -hmm. how do you execute these plans you have to have some good resources tools but you also have to have some strategies you know having your breakfast pre-made is a strategy mm -hmm. um and, and there's a lot of other things that can help to be successful so um that's very good i love that um let's see um so at what point does someone seek out a counselor how did they know that they need um, help? How do they know that they need to call, you know, have a consultation? At what point in, in, in going through a weight loss journey would you tell a patient, you know, that these are the things to look for where you need some professional support? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, when you have been working with excellent weight loss doctor like you, uh, <laughs> You've given them the plan, like you, you, you're seeing them in your monthly appointments, and it's just they're like to the point where they're like, well, it's been a month and I haven't made any um, changes. It's time to see someone because we have to figure out what's going on, that what's the blocking, what's blocking you from making those changes that we were so eager to get to when we first started this this journey. Mm -hmm. And I see that you're. Clients are saying, yeah, you get all in the business. <laughs> <laughs> you really care about your patients. Yes, That's you right. <laughs> That's right. All in your business. That's right. Um, okay. So if we're going through a plan and it's just we're not getting any success, so that may be based on time or duration or, you know, how you feel about it. If you're getting frustrated, um, if you, you're feeling stuck, you know, those are great opportunities to, um, you know, seek out a professional. I agree with that. And, and I'm sure that there are several others as well. And again, this is another place where I get in patients' business. I just tell them to go. <laughs> mm -hmm. I say, you know, this, this is time. <laughs> you know, this is an issue or this is an area. This is where we need um, to really dig up some roots. This is where we really need to do some intense therapy. Um, so sometimes I also nudge patients and say, it's time to, to go to a counselor. I'm still going to be there, right? I don't abandon patients. They'll still mm -hmm. be seeing me, but it's time to bring in another professional who can really help us unravel, you know, some of these issues. Um, all right. So we are wrapping up. Um, we have time for one or two questions if there are questions in the audience. Um, while we are waiting for that, can you tell people how to find you, you know, your, your business, um, mm -hmm. your social media, if you have any specials or anything like that? Okay. Yeah. So, um, my Instagram is at profound underscore counseling. Um, I am also listed under, um, psychology today as well. Crystal Moore Hallman. And um, my email address is crystal, C-R-Y-S-T-A-L, at Profound Counseling, if you wanted to reach me by email. Um, I do have a Facebook page, Profound Counseling. I am located in the Charlotte area, currently providing telehealth sessions. Um, but my office, my physical office is in the South Park area um, once we go back to the face-to-face. And I am currently taking self-pay clients, United Healthcare, Aetna, Cigna, and Blue Cross Blue Shield. Okay, that is awesome. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, and that was going to be one of my questions is, is, do you accept medical insurance? So that's great. So um, how would you like to close? Any last words for um, people, you know, advice or, or anything like that? Oh, we have a question. Here we go. What are your thoughts about fasting for weight loss, eating from 12 to 8 or 10 to 6 p.m.? Okay, so um, <laughs> that's not a mental health question. <laughs> um, so in my practice, all patients have um, individualized plans. Do I believe that intermittent fasting can be a, uh, a good weight loss plan? It can be, but it depends on the person. Um, I'm going to give you a huge pearl. The number one mistake that patients who do intermittent fasting make is they compensate in their eating. So they fast and then they overeat or they binge. So if you do that, that is not, you know, intermittent fasting is not serving you. If you've done intermittent fasting for one to two months, you haven't lost any weight, it's not serving you. So it depends on the patient. It depends on um, the plan. It depends on what you're eating in that window. Um, there's a lot of variables there, but can intermittent fasting be um, a good weight loss um, 
you know, plan or, or, or option, of course. Um, but it's not for everybody. And it really depends on what else goes along with that. Um, okay, so um, thank you so much, Crystal. And she likes to be called Crystal. So my patients will tell you I'm very formal. I only mentioned last names, but she has to be called Crystal. So mm -hmm. <laughs> or referred to as Crystal. So thank you so much, Crystal, for your insight. Thank you for seeing my patients. Thank you for being such a great um, part of the comprehensive weight management team. You know, I, we, we can't do this by ourselves. I can't treat all my patients by myself. There's, there's times where I need to call on other um, professionals, people who um, have expertise in, in different places. So I appreciate um, working with you and thank you so much for joining me on the live. Um, I will be going live again on Thursday. I'm going live with Dr. Tori. She is a podiatrist. So if your feet hurt, if you have joint pain in your feet, if the balls of your feet hurt, she is the person um, to talk to. So she's going to be joining me on Thursday at 7 p.m. again here on Instagram live and I will see you guys there. Have a good night. All right. Thank you. Good night. All right.